What's going on everybody? The Germ here. I am, I don't even know how to describe this place. It's called the Steel Stack. So I got this uh, magazine here. The cover of this magazine is basically what I'm going to show you guys. And I'm not sure how much information I can give you, but let's go on a little adventure. Well, I'm in the city of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and this area sure does love Mack trucks. This right here is a alcohol beverage stand. And check this out. This isn't real, or maybe it's partially real. I'm not sure, but it's like a 18-wheeler uh, of a Mack truck, but it's a food stand. There's no back wheels to this thing, so it's not real. Our adventure begins right up this staircase here. And you guys are going to see how cool this is. Look at this. Ready? I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek of this area. The Bethlehem Visitor Center is basically right below me. They're about to close. Uh, they close at 5 p.m. and unfortunately it's 4.55. So she gave me a brief history of this area and basically it was a steel plant. It's really cool over. It's very industrial looking and uh, they built this walkway up here which is kind of cool because it reminds me a lot of back home. All right, here we are at the entrance here. They do close this down. I think she said nine or 10 o'clock. And it basically tells a story about the Bethleh the beginnings of Bethlehem Steel. 150 years of industrial history. This reminds me of our uh, walkway over the Hudson, in the Hudson Valley. It's also like uh, the High Line in New York City but back here, this is awesome. She said it's about a three mile walk. I would love to do that, but unfortunately, I don't have the time to do something like that today. But this is super cool that they left all this here. It's amazing. They closed this down, she said, back in the uh, early 90s, somewhere around 1994. And um, they had used uh, made steel here. She actually mentioned the World Trade Center, the San Francisco Bay Bridge. They made steel for those projects. So they were up and running all the way up until the uh, early 90s. I love that they have all these signs here. So this says, uh, moving materials, the Hoover Macing trestle, the walkway that we're actually standing on right here. And it says, is the Hoover Mason trestle is an elevated rail line built to transport raw materials, blast furnaces named after the engineering firm that designed and built it. The trestle was in use from 1907 all the way until 1995. Oh, look at this, you can still see some train tracks right here. And I think that might actually be some kind of train car. See a number two on it, I can see a window there. And you can see the uh, tracks are still in place. I love these little signs. This one's about the blast furnace here. And it says these five blast furnaces were at the heart of the plant for many decades, ordinary up to three. Of the five would be in operation at one time. They rain continuously night and day, seven days a week. And these things are enormous. You know, it's cool to see a lot of these things are in place. Like there's a staircase here behind me. Uh, you can see some kind of generator here on the ground. They, they really actually left things. I don't know how safe it would be to walk on these steps and, and you're not allowed. Um, but it's kind of cool to see all the stuff that they actually left here. It's it's amazing. It's like a mine. It's like a Frankenstein of pipes. I can't even explain to you guys how enormous this is. They have a viewing platform here. And uh, it looks like more railroad tracks perhaps. So you guys can see in the background, there are some buildings that are still alive here. There's actually some kind of uh, PBS building here. Number 39, I don't know what that is, if that's the studio number. There are some buildings here. It looks like they do some events here too as well. I saw like a little concert stage. There's some kind of gigantic cog below me. And I'm not sure what that thing is all the way over there, but this cog, just like everything else here is absolutely, as you guessed it, enormous. I don't even know how tall that thing is. Maybe we can make our way down here. Right over here, there's a, a huge pipe right here, and there's actually a section missing. I'm not sure if it fall fallen, broken, or what, but seeing how big that is now, I could actually walk through that standing up. That's how 
big that is. That's probably at least a seven foot to eight foot wide hole uh, there in that pipe that I could probably walk from one end to another. I'm not sure exactly what went through that, but I wouldn't imagine why that was going. You would want to walk through that. Okay, it looks like we've come to two uh, options here. We can either go right and there's a staircase or we could go straight. I'm gonna go right just briefly, but I'm not gonna go down the staircase. It looks like, I think they put this staircase here so you could just see inside of this building here. Oh, wow. Wait till you guys see this. This thing is enormous too. This is probably as big as an aircraft hangar right here. And you can see all the machinery that's still left uh, behind from the days when they were actually producing steel here. I'm sure there's people still around this area that actually worked in this plant. I remember being here. It's all blocked off at the bottom there, but it's cool to be able to be elevated over here and actually see into the factory. That's a lot of steel right there. You can see the uh, lights are still hanging here. There's uh, quite a few of them. Those are pretty cool lamps. And the, uh, the roof is falling in in certain sections right here. It seems more than others. So it's definitely unsafe to be in here. Um, you would not want a piece of concrete falling from that area down here. That's probably a good uh, four stories right here that we're up. Uh, that would probably kill you. So that would not be a good thing. So I could see why they wouldn't want you into this, uh, into this building here. I'm just gonna give you guys a view of what we walked so far so you guys can see just how large this is. I've heard they lit, light this up at nighttime. We're not gonna be here for the nighttime, but they put some lights on it and shine it up, make it different colors. Here, that looks pretty cool. Just came another one of these uh, train cars here. Looks like the number three. It's a window there. I'd love to go in that thing. That yeah, might not be much to it, to be honest. I'm not sure what they would put in here. Raw materials, maybe? It's that little, uh, just that little compartment. Oh, there we go. This one's uh, open. Yeah, you really can't see much in there. There's car number five right here. And those go on and on. A couple kids on bikes, that's pretty cool. I didn't know you could ride up here. That's awesome, I would love to ride my bike up here. This is a very sad and emotional picture, I'm sure. If I zoom in here, it says, number three furnace, last crew, November 18th, 1995. I'm sure that was a very sad day, emotional day for these guys. There's a nice little quote right here. And it says, when the sole operator made his final cut, the tears started to come down our eyes and we hugged everybody. We were sad. And that was the first time we heard the mill silent. A lot of the guys you worked with were never gonna see them again. David Swartz, he was a beam yard saw operator. It's crazy. Imagine that. How's a place like this closed down? Wow, that building is big. That's actually a third of a mile long. The building there that I just showed you guys was machine shop number two, built in 1890. It was one of the largest industrial buildings stretching nearly a third of a mile. Workers in the shop build and drill Bethlehem steels into finished products and parts, including weapons, ammunition, and emissions. I can't say the word. And ships. Ammunition. There you go. This is crazy. During World War I, look at this naval guns are assembled the number two shop in 1918. Well guys, I think that's as far as I'm gonna take you on this tour here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, share, subscribe. And of course, as always, I am the germ. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bonus footage, or that giant cog I was telling you about. I was all the way up there before. Oh, there it is. I don't know how tall it is. I don't know anything about it. It says nothing. There's no information about it, but it is gigantic. I'm assuming, I'm sure it had something to do with that whole entire steel production plant up at the top.